joining me now is the campaigner and journalist Richard Lofthouse on this very point. Richard, welcome to you. Um, you seem to think this is fairly straightforward. The Mayor's Office is saying it isn't. Um, but just tell us how this would work broadly. So, well, thank you very much for having me. Um, the scheme is complex to run. The whole ULES scheme is phenomenally complex. You know, I find it unbelievable, as do lots of other people, that they couldn't tweak it to do something good and pull a silver lining out of something that's been so controversial. Yeah. So I think the way, the way it would work, um, we, we've accounted for well over a thousand vehicles that have been donated by ordinary people in this country. So they've bought the vehicles at market prices and then funded them to go to Ukraine. So I just got back. So these are volunteers. Yeah, these are volunteers. Off their own back. They've spent their say. own money to buy it. Okay. And now we're in the crazy situation where, in an invis invisibly, we're fighting with the the, the ULES scrappage scheme because the scrappage scheme is going to suck tens of thousands of vehicles out of an already very tight used car market, driving the prices up. So, I mean, that's a that's a straightforward negative. But apart from all of that, the way it would work is quite straightforward. Um, TfL would have to do a little bit of data to, to, to identify the, the best vehicles to, to, to go for Ukraine. So they're going to be four by fours, Chelsea tractors, pickup trucks, that sort of yep. thing. And then lots of different volunteer groups would be uh, willing to match the scrappage fee that the scrapyards pay, which is about a couple of hundred quid normally. Um, and the donor of the vehicle would tick a box that says they, they're happy for the vehicle to go to Ukraine. The vehicle will go to Ukraine, then driven or transported by... OK, so as, as it stands at the moment, because we hear the word scrappage scheme, we don't really know how it works. So you've got a car that's unfit for... Uh, it doesn't pass the ULES criteria, because Mr Khan has said your car is very bad and it's going to kill the planet. So you take your car um, and you get some money back, of course, and, yeah, the, and the, your car gets scrapped. At basically. the moment, you have to take it to an uh, end-of-life facility, DEFRA right. approved, and they pay you a... Yeah, you know, one or two hundred quid of a for car the, hospice. The actual scrap value of the car. Right. You hand the car over, the scrap yard gives you your certificate, and then you get your payout from TFL. Right. And then you go and buy a nice car yeah. that is compliant. That's with right. And then the scrappage company do whatever they do, make lots of money out of it. One as correct. Years. They in make lots of money in, out in of varying it. ways. So yeah. this idea is that you'd bypass the scrappage people and just simply tick a box saying, actually, this is a decent four by four. It just doesn't. Hit the yeah. Uh, what, what you hit, would hit the right buttons for you, Liz. So we'd like it to go to Ukraine. That's right. It would be uh, tweaking the scheme so that um, one or more of the volunteer groups would get treated as though they were one of the scrapyards. So we would also get to bid on those same vehicles as the scrapyards. We would be given equal status to them. We would be able to identify the vehicles we wanted for Ukraine, and that Ukraine needs, and off they would go. It's a really deliciously simple proposition compared to discussing cross-border immigration. The, <laughs> there, well, there is that. Uh, the mayor's office say, you don't want to do that. Um, this isn't that simple. That, that seems to be what... They're, they're uh, sending us down a rabbit hole. I mean, we haven't had a meaningful discussion yet, and this is a huge opportunity for the mayor of London. And it's also, I, I would emphasise, it's a cross-party issue. I, there's no policy argument against doing this. Mm. And it would extract, I think, a... a, a a, a, a sort of a good thing from what has been a really, really, you know, bruising fight for all sides. But it would but be more bureaucratic for TfL, right? I mean, that, that's... No, it would be... A, it maybe would not be enormously a, so, but yeah, it would change small, the system they've small got. Small variation to the existing system. We would just be bolting ourselves onto and in that scheme. OK. So, and when it comes to collecting the cars, just remind us again who foots the bill. Not the taxpayer. Not the taxpayer. Not the taxpayer. So the individuals that are involved... Yeah, I just took a truck honest. myself over the weekend and, you know, the, 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 the individuals taking the, the vehicles are paying for, for their transport yeah. and Ukrainians are paying. There's a sure. kind of a shared economy there. So it comes... Let's bring our panel back in. Ava and Ryan are still uh, with us. I mean, it sounds, Ava, to coin a phrase, a bit of a no-brainer, doesn't it, really? You've got some cars, Ukraine need the cars, they're going to be scrapped anyway, send them to Ukraine. What's not to like? I, I like the idea. I just wondered, what, is there, have you spoken to other councils up and down the country? Are there, you know, drivers from all over the country who want to maybe change their cars and there could be something that they could do? Well, we've, we've had a lot of that already. So we've had a lot of straightforward donations from generous individuals who have yeah. said, you know, I'm willing to, to give up my car rather than get a kind of, you know, peanuts in a trade-in. So that's going on anyway. 
Um, we've also had car dealers who've been generous and who have given us vehicles. In fact, I went over to Ukraine earlier this year with, a, with, a, with some car dealers. So there's a lot of goodness out there and a lot of generosity. But we're just saying the scale. I mean, if, if volunteers have managed to do at least one, two, three thousand vehicles is my estimate until now. Um, this, the, 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 the ULEV scrappage scheme is going to see tens of thousands of vehicles scrapped. So it could really move the dial for Ukraine. It would be a really meaningful and big gesture for London. Yeah. To turn, I mean, think about it. It's a unique moment in time where London is shelling out all these vehicles, and, and, and at Ukraine the very moment vehicles. that Ukraine desperately needs. So, them. so it's got to be a certain type of vehicle. J just remind us then, what, where were they? How many do they need in Ukraine? Are, are they many all as used possible. as kind of makeshift ambulances? Yeah, every or for use you else? can imagine. All the headlines are absorbed by main battle tanks and yeah. storm shadow missiles and that sort of thing. But 80, 90 percent of of, 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 of fighting a war is logistics. It's yeah. just boring transport. It's extraction, it's ambulances, it's field ambulances, it's frontline stuff, and it's just transporting people and, 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 and items from Got place it. to place. So they're all useful. Ava, do you... Th I, mean, I mean, Sadiq doesn't like people tinkering with his ULEZ, does he? Oh, I, mean, I think there that's is unfair. That. I think that's unfair. Is, uh, I think that you, you could do something... You think it's unfair? I mean, this, sound, this sounds good in principle. I think you can do something good like this without quite criticising ULEZ. You know, we can leave that alone for one minute, which you weren't doing. Um, well, it's intrinsically how, how linked, you, isn't it, really? How would you get there, though? How would you get them all there? I mean, if you had, say, you know, a couple of hundred cars. Well, the, the thing to remember here, um, we're already doing it. It's like, almost like the little boats, Dunkirk. You've got lots of different groups doing convoys on a monthly basis, sometimes more. So, you know, we've got dozens of vehicles. It's absolutely striking that when you're at the border, you can see lots of British plated vehicles parked up at the drop up drop off point. So this is already happening. Mm -hmm. OK. But, and I think the point, I mean, the reason why it, it's still, I suppose, over you know, you said, don't mention ULIS like we're going to have a whole debate about that again. <laughs> However, but, but there's a lot of bad PR for the mayor of London around ULIS, and lots of people are very, very unhappy Polls about very ULIS. Well, though, ULIS. Many Polls people, very well, though, ULIS. Polls very well. Yes, among the, uh, the the left of London, I'm sure it no, does. No, it's not but the left of London, are. but also... But, but, also, the, the, but know, the, the, the point is, the it's, it's true, isn't it? There is, there, there is a, a, a good bit of PR for the mayor to come of Well, this. you know, he also had a good bit of PR the other week because he did grant free, schools to all, uh, free school meals to all primary school children. But, look, back onto the Ukraine issue. Uh, you can get up to £2,000 to scrap your vehicle. So, you know, that, that would be a big trade-off. You'd be making a donation, wouldn't you? You'd have to sort of rely on the goodwill of the you people. Would, you would still get your payout. If you were the person right. giving the vehicle, okay. you would be no different. You would get the same scrap value that you would get from the scrapyard plus your payout. It would be exactly the same. You're not giving up anything. Right. But the, the vehicle, instead of lining the pockets of the scrapyards, mm. some of them, and it would be initially surely run as a pilot, and then it would be scaled up if, sure. it, was, if it was successful. We, we haven't even had that conversation. We're just trying to have the... We want to get into a room, and sit down, yeah. talk to TfL, talk to... And the they, they won't let you in the room? Well, chat. not yet. We haven't had anything yet. But um, got lots of good support, cross-party support within the London Assembly. There's a transport committee. Tomorrow's mayoral question times. We're hopeful that a question's going to be okay. asked tomorrow. And we've got lots of support from all sides, Tory, uh, Labour, yeah, Liberal yeah. Democrat. There's because no one can see a reason not to do this. What I mean, I mean Ryan, why, why would the mayor's office be so impenetrable to, uh, to, to, to what looks like a completely logical, no-brainer situation? To me, it seems exactly that. And if there were bureaucratic hurdles to this, you'd find a way of Get get, getting around it very, yeah, very yeah. quickly. And, you know, there the, the might be London. I think there's London mayor elections next year. You know, I, I would, you know, what a thing to put on the uh, on, on his manifesto, you know, on his pledge cards and say that this is this. I've done this. I've I've, I've ticked a box. So yeah. not only did I save the planet uh, with my ULEZ scheme and, and stop billions of people from dying, I've also sent vehicles to Ukraine. And save mm. lives. It's quite a win-win yeah. for Sadiq. Well, why don't, why don't you go higher? Go foreign office. Go MOD. Go right up there. Well, we've been having those sorts of conversations. Watch this space. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but it's, it sits with the mayor's office, so mm -hmm. it's the mayor's decision. And, you know, I would extend an invitation sure. to Sadiq to talk because it's just a great opportunity is. for him. So I, I'm absolutely sure the mayor of London is watching this right now. This is Richard Lofthouse. Get in touch, Sadiq. He wants to speak with you. Thank you, Richard. Thank Good you. Good to see you.